Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4 as Overpowered Ireland. Things are going along nicely, we can research military technology. I am going to wait until December to get the extra 60, um, the extra 60 military power off. And the base costs us 600, we're currently ahead of time, so it's costing us exactly 569. It should cost us 5, like, 15 next year. Um, we're, we're mostly just kind of churning along. I am kind of tempted to downsize my navy a little bit. I think this is actually a reasonably sized navy to hold on to for a while. Um, and I'll just naturally sort of in increase the ratio of my privateers. I would probably be making more money if I sold off more of these. Um, but I think having this relatively strong navy is actually doing a bit of work for me. And if nothing else, they act as kind of like a, a cash buffer that I can use, that I can sell off to people and stuff. Right, so, Let's see, one year. So we have to wait until December, and then we will have that. Now we're running into a little bit of prestige issues, but our prestige is recovering at a reasonable pace. Now, Republican tradition is dangerous for us, um, because soon we are going to start taking bad unrest penalties. Okay, so our innovativeness is decreasing. We definitely want to take diplomatic technology, and we want to take Arquebus. So, 514. I was pretty close. We're now ahead of time and innovativeness should go back to increasing slowly. We we don't mind if we don't get innovativeness from researching these. Wow, somebody has tech 7. Who has tech 7? Oh no, you know what? That just hasn't refreshed, has it? Wow, it has. Who has tech 7? Maybe it has to roll over the month for that to update. That's insane if somebody has that. No, 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 no. It was just, it just hadn't, hadn't updated. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to get cheaper advisors soon. That means we're going to have more money to play with, which is nice. We have a decent amount of manpower already. Uh, we did just research tech, so I can pretty much spend all my leftover power here on stuff. Now, actually, oddly enough, my capital has a really bad trade modifier here. Why is that? Huh. Why is that so inefficient? That's interesting. I guess it just has a really low trade value. So if we looked at Cork would be the best place to spend my development and Lagan would be the best place to spend my um, manpower. So we'll spend a little bit in here manpower wise and then we'll spend a little bit in Cork. We can't spend any more. Um, so we'll go down to Keldara, and that'll be all of it, basically. And we'll spend, we'll probably next month when we gain a little bit more, we'll spend a little bit more too. Just want to keep pumping up our development, because we're going to need to be fairly strong when we, um, when we hit the next era. And I start colonizing and stuff. So there you go. Picked up another little chunk of development. We're up to 113 development. I do want to st still keep developing my capital. That'll be something that I focus on. But, um probably be with some other stuff in place i want to i want to kind of balance between getting the most efficient upgrades versus uh developing my capital because i i think it would be a good idea to get a lot of these provinces to development 10 because then i could build extra buildings in them which makes you know them even more valuable all right and we've actually been doing really well in terms of buildings like we have plenty of churches out which is going to mean that any development that we do do in terms of tax is going to be way more effective Let's go ahead and get this. This is going to make advisors much cheaper, which means we have much more money to play with um, in terms of some other stuff. We are starting to make uh, okay-ish money from trade. We're still getting a decent amount from Spoils of War now. We're actually making more from Spoils of War. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think I want to get the treasury here. I think gold, I think gold is really the name of the game for me. I'm not having sailor problems, so I don't need that. It would be decent to get a few extra sailors, but it's not necessary. I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up some more tax, though. That tax is going to be really, really nice. It's going to mean that we um, we just make more money and you know our, our investments pay themselves off. I think it takes 50 years for a church to pay itself off if you get 0.1 ducats a month. It's, a, it's around about that, um, but it, it'll pay itself off quicker than that. 
so I definitely want to regain the Republican tradition because that means I can um, reuse this guy. And that's definitely worth 150 points over you know a five year period. So that's definitely worth it. And we can also get to work on another idea soon, which will definitely be exploration because we want to start colonizing as soon as possible. And once we have colonization, we'll start getting uh, global settlers and native assimilation, which is good. Now, I think we are going to be working on admin tech. So I think I'm going to say government is vital because the next two admin techs are actually quite important. So we'll take the admin tech discount. We're going to have a decent amount of production and manpower. And we're going to lag a little bit in admin tech for, for a little bit. But then we'll fall behind in terms of diplo tech. And it'll sort of even itself out over time. Um, production is really nice too because it increases our trade income. Um, and trade power. If you look here. Uh, local goods produced. Uh, if you look at trade power. It is from a base. It's You get 0 0.2 trade power per development. So by increasing this. Not only do we increase our trade power. We actually also increase our trade income because the trade value goes to the uh, goes to this node. You can actually see some of my provinces will be some of the most valuable. Yeah, you can see Mead, Kildara, uh, Cork, Ulster. A lot of these a lot of these local provinces are, are, are mine because I've been developing them. And actually, if we go to the development map mode, you can see like Ireland is pretty underdeveloped right now, but we are slowly building it up. It'll it'll look a little bit more like this area of um, It'll look a little bit more like this area of the Netherlands when we are, you know, maybe another 50 years or so into the game. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's going well. One point zero four per year, as long as the country is a republic. General diet. I think I'm going to go up to speed five, and then I'll just pause and talk when something interesting happens. All right, we are going to build another church here in Tyr Owen to get that 0 0.1 ducats per month. That'll add up over time. Okay, so we lost our naval reformer. Um, we are going to pick up, I think, oh, he is half price. The skill two guy. So I think I'm going to take the skill two guy for half price. That's pretty good. We'll live a decent amount of time, and he'll give us some trade efficiency, so he'll kind of pay off some of the extra that we're paying here. Let's have a look at Anhalt. They do not want to join my trade league. They would take an alliance. I don't want an alliance with them. Okay, East Frisia. Will join my trade league. Now they are transferring trade power to me, which is very nice. And East Frisia is actually in the English Channel, which means I should actually have technically some trade power here. Ooh, now that's a nice thing here. We could get plus two base production in our capital. So let's let's see if we can get a month to take over, so we don't go into debt here. That'll be plus two base production. Boom. Very nice. That's going to increase our income a decent amount. Uh, I think we can do this one more time before bad stuff starts happening. Yep. We don't want to go below 50, but staying just above 50 for these extra points here is definitely worth it. Considering we're making 12 per turn on this. Okay, workshop is available now. That's actually going to be super useful as a building. Uh, potentially even more efficient than my thingy. Let's see, I do want the na national tax. I also want Catholicism to gain reform desire. Because I want to become Protestant pretty much as soon as it's available. The only downside of me becoming Protestant 
is that well there's, it's kind of an upside downside it means i have an advantage because i'm over here and other nations won't be protestant so i'll have less protestants to compete with the downside is my neighbors will be catholic or anglican in england's case So yeah, I don't really have much interest in conquering Scotland or anything like that. I just want to play nice and sacred. Yeah, I'm going to reject the reform, take the inf inflation. We can buy that down pretty cheaply soon. You know what? I think I'm going to buy this down twice right now because that should actually give us a significant boost to income. Right now, a lot of our costs are being inflated because of our maintenance costs being inflated and the cost of our units. So if I buy this down twice, it should actually boost our income by 0.2 ducats, which is pretty good. All right, so if we build the production efficiency building in Mead, we will get an extra 30. Uh, three ducats a year about 3.6 ducats a year i think i'll lose the diplo power because i have a surplus of that right now i think i can also safely once again spend a bunch of diplo power um so i want to spend it in cork if I can, because this is where I'm getting the best returns right now. We got Cork up to 10. I think I'm going to actually prioritize my capital now, uh, because I want to get Renaissance to fully establish here, and it'll only take a couple of clicks. So I'm going to go manpower production. So now we've got the Renaissance present, and it should spread much quicker to these provinces. Yes. In fact, we could probably embrace it if we had the money. I'm going to let it naturally spread for a while. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Okay, we fulfilled the mission for high income. I'm going to take this here because it's going to give me uh, cheaper construction costs. And then I want to get build buildings, so I want to get workshops if I can. Before the um, thing triggers. Before we can change to the Irish nation, because then we'll get new missions. I'm not really using my diplomats right now, so that's fine. I don't really have many potential for allies. France is an option. Steel still has too many diplomatic relations. Free 50 Diplo power. We definitely want to build more of these workshops so that we get things. I think I have enough churches, right? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I should have only built five of those. I'm going to build some of these in cork. 0.18 ducats per month. Munster area. We get a bunch of unrest. It wouldn't be much though. And we would gain some army professionalism. We'd lose a bit of manpower, but that's okay. I'd like the army professionalism. Free professionalism works for me. It's a very small amount of... Um, very small amount of unrest. Let's get the papal influence. I'd like to maybe buy a little bit of mercantilism from him. We're going to keep our leader. This is the last time we can keep him, I think. Oh, I mean, we could guess. I guess we could keep running this down as low as it can go. 
but we do want to be careful. Yeah, we're starting to get really bad negative effects now that we're below 50. So I don't know if I can keep him for another year. Okay, Scotland doesn't consider me a rival anymore. That's interesting. Our force limit has gone up and we're going to get another privateer ship. Okay, Scotland re-announced me as their rival. Fair enough. We can build another building and we will build a workshop in Kildara for the 0.15 ducats. So I have about enough uh, monarch points to buy my next technology if there wasn't this large penalty. I'm going to save most of my diplomat points until I start hitting 999. But I'm going to switch over to focusing on diplo power. Because my next idea is going to be exploration. And I'm going to spend a little bit of my cash on base tax here. A, li a little bit of my admin on base tax. So let's do like three. And then three. And then we'll do three manpower and three manpower as well. There we go. Should boost our manpower a decent amount. Our development will go up. That'll also increase our caravan power. Up to 132 development power. So this is the power of having lots of spare... Um, lots of spare monarch powers from having really strong bonuses like minus tech and a really big leader. Because it means you can develop a nation like Ireland. You can see we're slowly becoming less and less red. Okay, we can invest in Diplotech. I think I'm pretty easily going to hit the cap here, so I'll spend a little bit here. Cork and kill Dara. Prioritize Cork a little bit. Yeah, we're bringing up to 10. 10's a good number. Uh, bringing up to 20 total development. That'll let us get another building. Cork is important because it produces copper. And copper will go up in value uh, at Miltech 7. There's an event that triggers. We lost one of our advisors. I'll go for discipline. We will build another uh, workshop because we want to get to five for our mission. Let's see here. We have Expand Era done. So this would give us... Ah, we would gain plus uh, one base attack production and manpower in need. So that's what we want for sure. Very nice. So we definitely want to get this build buildings. So that we get the plus 10 tax income for 25 years and the 50 admin power. That's going to be very, very nice. And I want to get that before I switch to the Irish nation. Global dominance is unlikely to happen. But build buildings is certainly viable. I'm going to continue saving up our powers here. Okay, we're going to take trade efficiency, more money. Alright, I think 
I think we can't keep Dub Lena anymore. We got as much value out of him as we can. He's 72. He's likely to die. I'm not going to spend 10 Republican tradition on a on a leader who's likely to die. I'm going to instead um, pick up the admin guy because I want to work on my base tax with the spare stuff. Uh, my military power is going to suffer a little bit. So we're going to pick up... Well... I guess manpower is pretty good. It doesn't give me income, though. So our power scores are a little bit worse than they were, but we should be fine. Okay, we build one more of these, and it looks like tier 1 is the candidate. The guilds took over, which means things got cheaper to build. That's unfortunate, because I just built this. Ooh, very nice. So we get some tech discount. Likely we're going to have to spend more of our diplomatic power. So again, with all that development we're doing, we have gained a little bit more room for light ships. So let's pop another two into this guy. I think I'll get it up to around 20 before I start defending my home node. I think... Uh, yeah, we're still making really good money off of privateering. Still more than our navy is cost, so that's that's what we want. Alright, so we're almost maxed out on Diplo power, so let's have a look around at places that almost have the Renaissance and see if we can boost them up to finish it to make embracing cheaper. So I think... Well, you know what I'll do? I'm just going to do it the most efficient way that I can. There. Let's spend a bit of it. We'll get that back soon. Okay, so we can select a naval doctrine. I think we are going to go ahead and it's either fleet and being or merchant navy. And I think a merchant navy is better since we're privateering um, than a discount. So I'm going to go ahead and take merchant navy. I will spend a decent chunk of cash, but I will get this will pay itself off over the course of the game. We also fulfilled the mission to build buildings. So we're going to get plus 10 tax income for... Um, For quite a few years, which is really, really nice. Oh, we need to research our tax. Production efficiency, trade efficiency, and we'll soon be able to research the military tech as well. We are going to take exploration ideas and try to fill that out as fast as possible. Which is why we are uh, set to prioritize this stuff. I think I'm going to take... In fact, I think what I'll do is my next leader will probably be a Diplo leader. Just so I can rush down the idea group as fast as possible. Um, I do have some spare points that I could spend though. So the institution tech penalty is hurting us a little bit here. It might have been a good idea to get that get that finished, but it'll be okay. I just want it to naturally occur in a few more places before I embrace it. I don't want to spend too much money on it.
Looks like one of our advisors died and it was the cheaper trader that we had. I think I would still like a plus two to get these ideas a little bit quicker. So I'm going to take... Well, the trade efficiency guy is just better though. We are going to go for a new leader. It will be a diplomat. Oh, very nice. And our leader is a scholar, so he's making tech cheaper. Right, I'm going to boost this in here with point of admin. Okay, I think it's time to embrace now. This is a reasonable price to pay for a big discount in tech. But I guess I could theoretically wait until I'm actually adopting my next tech. It would have either been good to do it recently, or it'll be good to do in the future. So I think I'm going to do it in the future. Um, I don't think I really get much from this. Like, I get a construction cost discount, which is okay, I guess. Um... But I'd probably just much rather build some of these things right now. A little bit of extra trade power in mead seems a good move. These sort of things that pay themselves off slowly throughout the game. Okay, we will gain some army professionalism here at the cost of some unrest. Definitely want to get my taxation level up so that any development that I buy is more effective. So we're going to keep working on that. Plus the raw income is really, really nice. Okay, we can invest in a new idea here. We're going to pick up Colonial Ventures. This will give us 352 it will cost us 352. Hmm. It's quite expensive. We do have a get plus one colonist, and we are going to go for native trading policy. Um, the reason my my thought behind this is that we it won't be like we won't be really going to war, so we'll have like the ability to have troops over in the new world, um, just kind of sitting on provinces. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with like sacrificing the like I'm okay with sacrificing the need to um have really good I have no uprising chance with the um global settler increase because we'll get more gold. Our, our colonies will just be better overall. Slightly faster colonies like this plus 20. It's not really that great late game and um, we have plenty of benefits towards getting global settlers anyway like we have this idea here this is plus 20 uh i believe the religion we're going will have plus 20 innovative ideas with exploration when combined they have a plus i want to say they have plus thingies here yeah settler chance plus five percent and then when we pick up expansion ideas there'll even be uh if you go down the bottom there yeah global settler increase plus 20 so we're going to have plenty of settlers, so I don't think we need this. I think I'd rather just have more goods produced that I can funnel to my trade node over here. Um, so that's why I kind of took both of both of those. It's nice uh, native assimilation. A little bit more corruption. Thankfully, we do have natural decay. Uh, so I think right now I'm feeling pretty happy to drill my army. 
So we're going to go up to our force limit, which is 22. I just want to have two cavalry, and then we're going to drill this army once we have a leader. And it looks like he picked up four fire to maneuver. This will make us just a little bit scarier. People won't want to declare on us as much. Alright, so we are going to build more churches to increase our tax income. And we've only got two more left to build. Okay, so now we can get quest for the new world. That's great. That'll also give us the global settler increase. So we're already up to where we would be if we had picked the um, native repression policy. We are going to grab our pirates. We are going to offshoot three barks. We are going to equip them with an explorer as soon as possible. You're going to go back to privateering. We'll lose a little bit of money out of this, but that's fine. Okay, let's get ourselves an explorer and start exploring the North Atlantic. Another church. I don't want to lose Republican tradition. I kind of dipped too heavily here. I'm happy to lose the stability. It's okay. We're going to get another diplomat candidate. We have explored the North Atlantic, which is nice. Let's see a little bit more. I think we are going to explore North Atlantic coast. Yep, definitely want to quarantine the port. I have went with the non-quarantine option before and it has never went well. It has always ended in devastation for me. Okay, so we explored up here. Okay, we need more colonial range. Build the final church that we need to bring our income up to a nice level. We've explored the American East Coast and now we will explore the American East Coast Coast. I'd rather the prestige. We'll keep exploring here. We will explore the sea before we explore the coast. Okay, we can purchase an ability with Splendor. I think we're going to go ahead and take higher developed colonies. It's unlikely that we'll get much value out of this. But I think it's a good one to take if we do get any colonies finished. You know, three development isn't bad in these provinces. It makes them much more valuable. So for now, I'm going to save up for Manufactories, I think. Um, 
Manufactories are like my best move here to increase the general power. I don't think it's really worth it to build these production buildings. They're cheap and they do pay off well, but I think the manufactory is really nice because it gives me a large boost to a province's power and also to the trade power. So we explored another sea zone. We will go ahead and explore the Caribbean Sea. There's the colonial range that we need. Now, I definitely want to colonize these pieces of land because what it does is it acts as a blocker for some of these other civilizations. It might take them an extra tech to get over here. So I'm going to go ahead and take these up as terrible as they are. Like this would be a much quicker colony. But I'm going to take this. Which means that we need to take... I like to use... Basically two infantry to guard my colonies. So we will take two infantry from this guy. And we'll put them down here in a wagon. I've got a fork with these guys. We'll head up there. We could embrace the institution now. We are getting close to wanting to tech up. Um, let's see. Oh, we'll probably get it slightly cheaper if we wait. I don't need it. I'm not upgrading my tech yet. Yep, that's to be expected. You're taking pretty high naval attrition. Shouldn't be a problem once we get up here, though. And this is going to be our New World fleet, the start of it. Our New World army. They'll pretty much sit up there forever now. So, since I have... Oh, I don't have the trade range to get here yet. Damn. Never mind. I was going to say I can start pulling from the Rhinelands now, but I can't do that yet. I'll lose the manpower. I haven't been using my manpower for anything. Alright. Another diplomatic candidate. We want to get these ideas finished as fast as possible. We will continue to explore. Continue exploring the sea zones first. Definitely want to get a colony in the Caribbean and on Eastern America and Canada. Well, the Fraticelli heretics are actually becoming a problem. How long until this modifier goes away? Two years. Oh. I'll have to keep an eye on this. If it goes up to 90%, that's worrying. Is there a unrest guy? Let's wait a month and see if a guy appears. We can invest in a new idea. Global settlers increase. That's very nice. That's going to mean that this colony is done even faster. It's getting 50 per year despite the negative penalties. Which is pretty good. 50 per year, that means it's going to take 20 years maximum for this colony to finish. Um, I have to actually, let me look up here. I have to look up how colonization works again. Uh, EU for colonization. Here, let's just take a quick look. I want to refresh my memory. Let 
my display capture isn't working, so I guess I'll just read it out loud. I can't show you the picture I'm looking at. Um, uh, let's see. As long as a colonist remains a colony, they have a chance of bringing in 25 additional population, speeding growth greatly. Once a colony reaches a population, round of you sign a trade good based on a weighted list. So we have a 15% chance of bringing in 25, a 16.8% chance to bring in an extra 25 people, which is a whole year's, like, if, we, if that triggers twice a year, that's a whole year's worth of uh, growth. So that's quite good. We want to definitely keep our colonist working there. Let's have a look. Unrest guy? No? All right, we'll go for some, uh, I guess inflation reduction wouldn't be terrible, and I think she is pretty cheap. We could afford her. Production efficiency would also be quite good. I think I'll go for the production efficiency here. I'll send my explorer out on a mission. Uh, American East Coast, yes. I want to explore the sea zones first. Let's see. Uh, I think it's time to embrace this now. I don't think it's going to get much cheaper. Well, it will. But I think I'm just delaying it for the sake of delaying it at this point. Pay the 100. Boom. That saves us 40% of our tech costs. And we also develop a little bit cheaper now. Level uprising. That's at 90% now. Let's see. Harsh treatment. 195 points. Nope. Split this. How come my army isn't... There we go. Yeah, I definitely want to lower taxes here to lower the unrest. I think I can just eat that. Ah, yes, excellent. It's now decaying. The reassessment survey should go away soon, and we can invest in a new technology. We won't invest in a new technology just yet. Can't build a manufactory. Not too worried about that. That's okay. So one more year, and we'll get new tech. We explored the American East Coast. Let's go ahead and explore again. Atlantic, South America. I'd like to get as many colonial nations as possible. Um, because that'll give me more merchants, but I don't want to overextend too hard. I want to get them up to, like, size 10, so I'll probably have, like, I'm likely to have, like, four to five colonists. Yeah, with my colonial ideas, I'm likely to have four to five colonists, so I'll make sure that I'm keeping things going uh, nicely. I want to make sure I get them up to size 10. I don't want to just get one and then leave it. Okay, a couple more months. We will get, we will not get innovativeness for this, sadly. Okay, let us boost now. Look how cheap these are. We're not ahead of time in trade tech anymore, but we do have this idea group to fill out, so I'm okay with falling a little bit behind there. The active uniformity, I'm not going to pass that. Let's keep an eye on Reform Desire. Reform Desire is getting high. So the potential to switch over here is coming. I think I'm going to pick up that plus one mercantilism now. There we go. That'll bring us up to a healthy 14, which makes our embargoes more efficient. In fact, actually, quick question. Is England embargoing us? Yeah. We should have been embargo embargoing them a long time ago. Uh, issue embargo. Boom. That should reduce their penalty against us. And it'll hurt them in this node as well. So yeah, we're picking up some good old privateering here. 
Wait a minute. Where are you privateering? Wait, why are you privateering in Bordeaux? How much were you making? 0 0.6. That's sad. I clicked the wrong one. Privateer in... The English Channel. Although Lubeck is almost worth as much. So it might be worth privateering there later. There we go, felt hat, so fur is now worth more. And the really nice thing is more and more value will be bleeding into the North Sea. In particular, once we start establishing Canada. So we're going to be more focused on Canada than anywhere else. Because this is the node that feeds in directly into the North Sea where I collect. Um, but a little bit of collection in, in Chesapeake and some of these, if I can... Get the, the trade flowing the way that I want it up towards the North Sea. That's good. But I think there's no sense in me establishing big, strong power, like pre small presence in all of these nodes if I have a crap present in the Gulf of St. Lawrence because this is like, this is the most important node for me to get money because it's the only node that feeds the North Sea. Probably a heretic. That actually. New idea, global tariffs are up. Native assimilation goes up. So if we go into here, we'll see that um, the assimilation rate will uh, we'll get 0 0.1 goods produced, which is, you know, a decent amount. It's a little bit more money across the entire game. Uh, we're going to replace you with another diplomat candidate. National unrest, minus two. That's actually quite good. Let's get all these guys into one spot now that the unrest problems are over and we can start drilling them. We did just also get new tech, so I feel like I could spend some of my points here. Let's focus on the highest reward for this stuff. We Falga. Maybe I'll do one more development of each next month. One in Connacht, and then one in Dez. Right, that's enough development. So we're slowly picking up a little bit of development. We started off around 80, so we've nearly doubled our development. And if we take a look at this map, you can see we're a little bit less red. We're slowly turning orange and yellow. So you can see we are building up in terms of power. And in fact, um, we're getting you know reasonably close to being a great power in terms of our development, which is good. That'll only become better and better as uh, the game goes on, as we unlock more ideas. In particular, this one is going to be useful, and then the also the really important one is the Republican tradition. That's going to significantly boost the amount of monarch points we can earn, because we can uh, keep the same ruler more often. Go and explore, explore again. I like to explore all the seas first, just so I can, because sometimes you can gain useful information. Like if I if I peek in here, I might be able to see a little bit of the colors underneath. Let's see, here's some stuff. So I can get an idea of where people might be colonizing. Two more of these and we'll be in great shape. Can I afford... Oh, actually, I have a half-price trade efficiency guy, so I'm going to go up to him. That'll get me that extra point per month that I crave. Can't quite aff I, ca I can't quite afford to go up to an extra military point, although I do desperately need it. Nice. We explored the South Atlantic. Let's start exploring the Caribbean coast. I think the Caribbean is pretty important too, because it's like the gateway to a lot of these areas. So if I can get a get a good foothold on the Caribbean, Chesapeake, and the Gulf of St. Lawrence, I can control a lot of the trade in this area, because a lot of it feeds through the Caribbean, and I can go to the Caribbean and then push it up towards the Gulf of St. Lawrence. So these are going to be like my three big um, trade zones that I want to get a control of. Yep, we'll lose one stability. It's not the end of the world. It is, you know, it's a negative, but it's fine.
Okay, we can invest in a new idea. We get a second colonist. Very nice. We are immediately going to be sending this colonist here because, and for one reason, it's not a good... It's not... A, there's, there's no point in doing this. I just want to have Greenland be my color. <laughs> it's like, that's that's it. I just want Greenland to be to be the color of Ireland. That's like my entire excuse. Um, that's it. That's all I want. All right, we charted the Caribbean. Let's go ahead and chart the American South Coast. I don't mind them getting a little bit more aggressiveness because it gets me prestige. Let's have a look. Our naval force limit has gone up. We will get another bark. I think I'd rather lose the Republican tradition now since I'm building it back up. Uh, let's go ahead and protect our trade. Yeah, a little bit of local unrest is okay. Okay, there's the exploration and we can pick up... Combat bonus in the capital. Almost time to go Protestant. Let's explore another American East Coast. We're going to go with another Diplomat, because we want to finish that group off. We lost a military leader. Let's get a new one. I'm going to keep drilling. Even though it costs us money, it does get us um, all-important army professionalism, which gives our units more damage. Okay, our colony has been attacked. Let's move our troops over. Oh, they managed to damage the colony. Whoops. I need to send another two troops over there. I like to just garrison my colonies with two troops. It makes me... Because then I can... It's... If, like... Two troops are not scary, right? Um, singular troops can usually do the job, but... Two troops aren't scary, but four troops, like, that can actually pretty reliably fight off some of the Native American armies you're going to see. So, like, I like to have, you know, little, little groups of two. Let's continue exploring here, West African coast. I might also want to look into going down this way, although I might completely ignore trade companies and just primarily focus on the Americas. Because I don't really have a reliable way to bring the trade down to me. Yeah, I think I'm going to focus on the Americas. All right, our naval force limit modifier, very, very nice. And we can fabricate claims in overseas regions. Excellent. So that's going to mean we'll be able to get quite a few more of these um, privateer ships. In fact, we can get another six of them. And we will pretty much immediately go up to our maximum force limit because this is, this is where the majority of our sort of trading income is coming for in terms of efficiency. And if we can get the number of ships blockading over here uh, and, and raiding and stealing money, it's going to be quite good. 
and we'll explore one more place. And then once we're done exploring the North Atlantic, we'll probably call this an end to this episode. Now, again, not much happened here. It was mostly a setup episode. The really interesting things are going to start happening in the, in the next few episodes. I'm going to gain the admin power here. This tech deck definitely needs to be upgraded. Okay, so there it is. We have fully explored uh, the coastline of places that we need to. We can start colonizing the Caribbean pretty much immediately once this is established here. And in fact, it is very, very close to being established, which is very nice because we have the adjacent controlled modifier. Um, the really nice thing about establishing the Caribbean is that it has a very high base development. It doesn't have a huge amount of manpower, but it has really good production and tax, and the trade goods here tend to be really nice. There's also quite a few really nice um, trading ports, so I'm going to want to have to... I'm going to want to see if I can get the uh, Baronas and Havana here for the extra trade power. Uh, uh, that's kind of like one thing that I'm going to prioritize are these these high-value trade, trade nodes, because I feel like they're going to give me the best bang for my buck in terms of colonization, and I have a little bit of a head start. And if I can get another idea group, I'll be able to get two more colonists. Um, well, three if you include expansion ideas. And then I'll be up to five colonists. And I'll be churning out colonies um, for the new world. Really, really nice colonies that have um, have a lot going for them. I could even maybe spend some... Once I'm making like... Once I've got my, my homeland fully built up, I could possibly even look to... Um, start building buildings over here and make them even better and like basically turn the new world into a superpower but yeah that's kind of like that's kind of where we are we're still little old ireland uh now we have median greenland it will become irish greenland later once we hit tech nine we will be able to form the irish nation and we will get new missions and change to ireland so yeah i want to thank you guys very much for watching i hope you guys are enjoying this series please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos Remember to leave a like if you wanted to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. This is a little bit of a different series. We're not playing too seriously. We're kind of just having fun. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you later, taters. Bye-bye.